Welcome to this edition of the Scleroderma Foundation podcast. This time we'll hear from a member of the national office staff, as well as a representative from our medical and scientific advisory board. And finally, a pair of boots on the ground, a local chapter leader. Each of these guests will share insight and expertise as the foundation tirelessly strives to fulfill its mission of support, education, and research. Now let's head out to the foundation headquarters and join our host, Ross Blacker, to kick off another exciting episode. Thank you, Bob Christoph, and welcome to the very first edition of the Scleroderma Foundation podcast. I'm your host, Ross Blacker. We have a great show lined up for you today with three wonderful and highly knowledgeable guests. We'll talk to Foundation CEO Robert Riggs, Board Vice Chair Dr. Carol Fagali Bostwick, and we'll wind things up with Stephanie Summers Gresh, the Executive Director of our Greater Chicago Chapter. We hope that these visits will be informative and entertaining as we cover a multitude of topics pertaining to scleroderma and the foundation. We'll get it all going following a 15-second break with our first guest, Robert Riggs. The Scleroderma Foundation in no way endorses any drugs, treatments, clinical trials, or studies referenced in this podcast. Information is provided to keep listeners informed. Because the manifestations and severity of scleroderma vary among individuals, personalized medical management is essential. Therefore, it is strongly recommended that all drugs and treatments be discussed with the listener's physicians for proper evaluation and treatment. We're pleased to welcome our very first guest on our very first episode of the podcast, Scleroderma Foundation CEO Robert Riggs. Robert has been at the helm of the foundation since 2009 after serving as its chief development officer for two years prior. Throughout his tenure, Robert has kept the foundation squarely on the purview of the general public, the medical community, pharmaceutical and biotech companies, as well as elected officials. Scleroderma patients and researchers alike have reaped the benefits of Robert's tireless efforts. Robert makes sure that the Foundation's voice is heard as co-chair of the NIAMS Coalition, a consortium of 93 professional medical research and patient advocacy organizations that work to educate government officials and advocate for the National Institute of Arthritis, Musculoskeletal, and Skin Diseases at the National Institutes of Health. He has spent a better part of his formative years in Arizona and looks forward to bringing the conference to territory familiar to him when the National Patient Education Conference is held in Chandler, July 21st through the 23rd. We're making some history here today, Robert. Thanks for joining us. Well, thank you, Ross. I'm excited about this new podcast program, and thank you for your efforts to bring it to fruition. I'm happy to participate. My pleasure, Robert, and we'll we'll dive right in. Can you just give uh, myself and our listeners a brief background of how you arrived at the foundation and became chief development officer and then rose through the ranks to CEO? Sure, I'll try to condense it. I've been involved with the organization for, um, I believe this is my 21st year. I was uh, originally uh, the the chapter relations uh, director for one of the predecessor organizations of the current foundation. It was called the United Scleroderma Foundation, and we were based in California. And shortly after joining the uh, United Scleroderma Foundation, I became their executive director. And that was back in the late 90s. And in 1998, um, a group from the East Coast-based Scleroderma Federation and the West Coast-based United Scleroderma Foundation, which I was a part of, came together and we merged the two organizations uh, to create the current Scleroderma Foundation. And I moved from California to uh, the Boston area, actually to Danvers, where we're currently uh, headquartered, and uh, joined that new organization as its development director. Shortly after the merger, in probably late uh, 1998, early um, 1999, I, the executive director, left and I became the interim executive director. Then I departed in late 1999, but I was invited to stay on the national board of directors, and I served um, a uh, about eight years on the national board of directors and was 
stepping off at the end of my term when the chair and executive committee of the national board asked me to consider coming back on board in the foundation and that was in 2007 and I rejoined the organization as an employee as the chief development officer in 2007 and then in 2009 was appointed the CEO so that is sort of a long history made very brief and Robert since becoming the CEO I mean there's been so many changes and, and great advances in research how has the job changed well, I think it, it is continually changing uh, because the needs of the community are changing uh, somewhat more rapidly, it seems, these days. Certainly, um, social media, uh, the Internet, uh, and the need for um, being the leader, the leading organization that provides um, accurate and medically vetted information to not only the scleroderma community but to the general public at large is is a really uh, big part of what we have to do um, i think that the challenges of instantaneous messaging that people can do and everyone having a platform whether it be through blogs or their own social media networks has really changed what we have to do as an organization uh, and how we respond to information that's put out there that may not be as accurate as as it needs to be or is properly vetted by medical professionals so one of the greatest challenges i think that we have faced over over the last year is actually the proliferation of information that's out there and making sure that we ha are in a position to review it vet it and make sure that what we have out there is the most accurate and medically correct that and i would say the on on the very positive side that uh, the pipeline of potential new therapies that is currently under investigation by the uh, pharmaceutical and biotech industry and also what's coming out of um, uh, research labs around the country and around the world has really changed the landscape of the scleroderma community uh, for the better and it's a very exciting time so i would say that those are the two biggest changes that i have seen in the past 10 years and Robert, I think, you know, in talking about the chapter structure that we have here, we have 20 active chapters, you know, from sea to shining sea, if you will. Talk about how integral they are to our overall success. Oh my gosh, uh, it's, it would be hard to imagine uh, accomplishing the work that the Scleroderma Foundation does without that network of chapters uh, throughout the country and and also uh, the, our support groups of which we have 160 some odd active uh, support groups around the country you know uh, the backbone of our organization really is uh, providing that education that uh, sense of community to people who are living with this very complex uh, oftentimes isolating disease and if we cannot uh, provide people with the opportunity to engage and to educate themselves and to have and through that education become more empowered as their own advocate in their health care uh, then we are not really meeting our mission as it relates to providing the patient support and education a great deal of what happens in in that and why we have such a dedicated um, group of people throughout the country who support our mission is because of the work that happens at the chapter level in the communities around the country one office uh, regardless of where it is and a team of people could not have the reach that um, that we have because we have the chapters in place and all the dedicated people both paid staff but also an, an amazing group of volunteers throughout the country that actually deliver the services and the education and the uh, support the peer-to-peer -peer support to uh, the patient uh, population throughout the country chapters are absolutely vital in that delivery of service Robert, I think that's great, and, and just to our listeners, later on in this podcast, we'll be hearing from Stephanie Summers Gresh, who is the executive director of our Greater Chicago chapter. So Stephanie's been in place for a little over three years, brings a great, unique perspective to things, and 
we look forward to that. But back to the task at hand, Robert. You, uh, as I alluded to in your intro, spent some formative years in the great state of Arizona. I know you're a graduate of Northern Arizona, a proud lumberjack. Talk about our uh, patient education conference coming to your old stomping grounds July 21st to the 23rd. Just talk about the evolution of the conference into kind of what it's become today. Uh, that's a great question and certainly a great point of pride for me personally and professionally as well as for the organization as a whole. Uh, the National Patient Education Conference was a program that uh, I uh, worked and spearheaded uh, when prior to the organization, uh, the, the establishment of the current foundation in 1998. And we had a very we had a very small team of people that worked on it, maybe two or three staff people, and did it all in-house and probably had 150 people attend. It has really grown exponentially, programmatically, um, and, you know, to, to the size that it is now of over 75 workshops or more, a juvenile program that is absolutely outstanding and almost a conference within a conference to see the growth programmatically that this has um, gone under for the past 10 years is tremendous it is the largest patient focused scleroderma event that happens anywhere in the world and the amount of effort that's put into it by both uh, volunteers, our medical advisory board, and certainly our staff is tremendous. And it's really a hallmark of, of what we are as an organization. I don't know if I want to take credit for bringing it to my home state of Arizona, particularly in July when it will be over 100 degrees, but uh, I am very proud to have it uh, uh, wherever, whatever community we go to, it's an important part. We move the conference around every year. Uh, to different uh, parts of the country, uh, you know, China, East Coast, West Coast, Middle. Uh, this is sort of a Western United States uh, year. Uh, we have typically been in California, but we have uh, wanted to bring it to Arizona because it is an area where we don't have a chapter, but we have a very large patient population that really can benefit by the services uh, that and the educational experience that the conference brings to them. So it is uh, both meeting a need that we, we want to provide as far as a, a um, a large national meeting and conference of the scleroderma community, but it also is bringing much needed educational um, opportunities to to our patients that live in that state. So I'm very proud of the program and very excited that we'll be in Arizona for the first time. Yeah, as, an, as a new staff member, I can't tell you, I've heard the stories, but just to experience it is going to be uh, something I'm greatly looking forward to. So, Robert, just a, how important is it, is it for the foundation to have our voice heard uh, when it comes to policies and key decisions? I think you're alluding to uh, the work that the foundation does in the realm of advocacy and our government yes. relations outreach. And I believe that it is a, a very important part of what we do. We are classified as a patient advocacy organization. That means that we have a role and responsibility uh, to, to bring the concerns and the needs of the, of the scleroderma community, and in a broader sense, the rare disease or uh, small population disease community to the attention of policymakers. And, you know, we are certainly hearing daily in the news about how um, access to health care uh, can, can change for people uh, depending on what our elected officials uh, want to advance as far as policy. And the voice of the American public is really what uh, what helps inform people to make decisions that benefit our our um, our constituents. So what we have been able to do and what we focus on certainly is making sure that diseases such as scleroderma have the attention of lawmakers, particularly around the funding of medical research. We all know that um, more uh, larger disease states, such as cancer, such as heart disease, 
uh, get a huge amount of federal funding for research and great advances in therapeutics and even more towards cures have been made. What we are seeing in the scleroderma community, but not only in the scleroderma community, but across the board in rare disease states, is that the funding is not keeping up that allow to the point that allows researchers to do the research necessary to bring about better therapeutics and discoveries in the rare disease space. If we lose those researchers, we lose our chance of finding those better uh, therapies and finding potentially that cure. So our voice in Washington as a community is vital to that process to make sure that we are not left behind in the development of therapies and in the development of scientific research. Robert, that uh, really encapsulated that, and uh, thank you so much for joining us. I feel like we touched on a number of topics, and uh, hopefully it's uh, you know something that our listeners, our patients, or their families and friends, or our whole audience can find very useful. So thank you so much for joining us. Ross, thank you for this opportunity, and as always, I encourage any of the listeners to this podcast to reach out to me directly through the Foundation's national office. I'm happy to discuss any of these uh, topics or others um, if uh, if there, someone has an interest in learning more. I'm happy to do that, and thank you again for the opportunity. Thank you, Robert, and after this brief time out, we will be back with Dr. Carol Fagali bostwick Thank you for listening. This July, the Foundation will take its show on the road into the desert of Arizona for its 19th Annual Patient Education Conference. Be sure to join us for what promises to be an amazing and enlightening experience in Chandler, July 21st to the 23rd. Visit www.scleroderma.org backslash conference for more details. We hope to see you there. Now let's return to the podcast with your host, Ross Blacker. Let's head south down Route 95 from our Danvers headquarters all the way to Charleston, South Carolina, and welcome in our next guest, Dr. Carol Fagali Bostwick. Dr. Fagali Bostwick's association with the foundation dates back to the early 2000s. She currently serves as the vice chair of the foundation's board of directors, as well as the chair of the research committee, a group that awards nearly $2 million annually to those researching scleroderma. Since 2013, Dr. Fergali Bostwick has held the Kitty Trask Holt and Smart State Endowed Chair and is a professor in the Division of Rheumatology and Clinical Immunology at the Medical University of South Carolina. Her research focuses on fibrosis encompassing disorders, most notably systemic sclerosis, a form of scleroderma. Her research has graced the pages of various medical journals and she is highly decorated having received the Foundation's Messenger of Hope Award. You might have seen her on our website and social media channels giving a tour of her research lab recently in conjunction with our South Carolina's chapter's Patient Education Day. We're pleased to be joined right now by Dr. Carol Fagali bostwick Welcome, Dr. Fagali bostwick Thank you for having me. Yeah, uh, we'll uh, just jump right in. In, in. in the last five years, how do you think scleroderma research has advanced? What are some of the key findings? So I think over the past five years, we've seen a lot of advances, um, partly because we have a lot better tools um, to do the research, more sophisticated tools, more high throughput tools that can help us do the assays faster. For example, we understand better that scleroderma is not just scleroderma. There are many different subtypes of scleroderma uh, that can be differentiated at different levels, at the level of individual molecules and genes, at the levels of autoantibodies uh, that can differentiate subgroups of patients. Uh, we have come to understand a lot better what's happening in the blood vessels and the, what's happening to, to the cells of the blood vessels, such as endothelial cells and smooth muscle cells. We understand better what the players are in the fibrosis aspect in the tissues, so where there's the increased matrix or thickening of the tissues, we know more which key players, molecules are there that may be promoting the thickening and the increased collagen. And I guess more 
Recently, we've come to learn that there might be an opportunity to repurpose drugs that are used for other indications and use them for scleroder scleroderma, as well as developing new drugs that have not been previously used. That's great, and, and, and Dr. Fagali Basri, just a, we touched a, a little bit about it in the open, but our research grant program, you know, and our, our medical and scientific advisory board, what do you see the role of that? And I know you were, a second question is, you were extremely instrumental, as you have been every year in, uh, you know, our research grants, kind of giving money to the next generation of researchers to uh, come up with a cure. Just touch on those two things, the advisory board and the grant program. Right. So our advisory board, um guides a lot of our programs and serves to provide a lot of advice input on both clinical matters and research matters. Um, the research program has been instrumental in many ways. It is a lifeline for investigators who work on scleroderma because scleroderma being a rare disease has historically not had enough funding through other agencies to support all the researchers in the field. Uh, but more importantly, our scleroderma research program has been the stepping stone and the start of many leaders in the field. So our medical and scientific advisory board is made up of many leaders in the scleroderma field, and many of those individuals got their start with an early scleroderma foundation grant when they were just taking off in their careers. So the scleroderma research program has been an opportunity for scleroderma researchers to get funding to do the important research they're doing when it's difficult to get funding for everybody at other, um, through other foundations or organizations. But at the same time, it's been, um, in a way, the start of many leaders in the field. That is great, kind of a breeding ground for pioneers and people with breakthrough research. Uh, although there is no cure at this point, have you seen treatments and therapies improve? I mean, you kind of touched on that earlier, but just to kind of reiterate that point a little bit. Right. It's actually, I think it's a very exciting time in scleroma research because there are many different potential therapies being developed by many different labs in the U.S. and abroad um, that involve new therapies. But there's also a lot of recent research that suggests that it may be possible to repurpose some existing drugs that have been used, for example, in the setting of cancer uh, that may be effective for scleroderma that are currently being tested. So I think we're going to see over the next two to three years all these potential therapies that are coming through the pipeline go through clinical trials, and hopefully more than one, hopefully multiple, will be effective in the clinical trials and can move further along for scleroderma patients. That is great. And speaking of our patients, What's the best way they can keep abreast of the latest in research? What are, what are some good resources they should really be checking out? Well, I, I think the Scleroderma Foundation is a great resource because the information that the Scleroderma Foundation provides in their publications and their weekly e-letter on the website is up to date, but it's also been vetted by the Medical and Scientific Advisory Board to make sure that it's accurate information. There are a lot of scientific sources where they can search that are available to the public, even though maybe the language may be a little too difficult to understand if you don't have a science background, but things like PubMed searches, Google Scholar searches, you know, by just typing the words scleroderma or systemic sclerosis, uh, you can pull a lot of the most recently published scientific articles and just get a feel for what kind of research is out there. Um, but obviously, turning to the Scleroderma Foundation for reliable information, I think is key. And then finally, how can our patients contribute to the research we've spoken about, you know, and facilitate and potentially accelerate it? So they can contribute in a lot of different ways. Everybody has their strengths and different patients may want to approach different ways. One way is to help increase awareness about scleroderma, which can be done in different settings. Another way could be to speak to our elected officials about scleroderma, about the importance of doing research on scleroderma so that funding for scleroderma could increase from federal funding sources such as the NIH or the DOD, uh, where there really is insufficient funds for scleroderma research. 
Another way is to support research directly by donating to the Scleroderma Foundation. They have the option of restricting their donations to research, and that would automatically ensure that all the funds they donate go directly to support research grants um, that are being awarded through the Scleroderma Foundation through a peer review mechanism that ensures that the best science is getting funded. So there are a lot of different ways patients can participate depending on their comfort level and what uh, what they have access to, I guess. Well, Dr. Fagali Basuk, I just want to thank you for your time, and hopefully the uh, information we spoke about is relevant and helpful to the main audience You know, we're, we're intending to hit on this podcast, which is our patients. So I want to thank you for joining us, and after this brief break, we'll be back with Stephanie summers Gresh. Stephanie serves as the Executive Director of our Greater Chicago Chapter. This is the Scleroderma Foundation podcast. You can check us out on www.scleroderma.org. As the old saying goes, membership has its privileges. For just $25 annually within the 50 states, or $35 internationally, you can become a member of the Scleroderma Foundation and receive our full-color quarterly magazine, The Scleroderma Voice. By joining, you will help us deliver our mission of support, education, and research. Join today by visiting www.scleroderma.org. Every dollar counts. Now let's return to the podcast with your host, Ross Blacker. And now let's head out to the windy city of Chicago and welcome in our next guest, the executive director of the Foundation's Greater Chicago Chapter, Stephanie Summers Gresh. Stephanie has served as the executive director of the chapter since 2013. She has a strong personal connection to the disease, which we'll hear about shortly, in addition to her impressive professional background. Stephanie, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. All right, so as I alluded to in the open, Stephanie, kind of uh, touch on briefly your personal involvement with uh, scleroderma. Yeah, Stephanie, that's great. I think that the the misdiagnosis is something that we hear a lot from uh, patients and their families, that this disease just has so many manifestations, sometimes it's difficult for a doctor to to really diagnose. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so that's why, you know, just us being out in the community as much as possible and building awareness is really important. Right. And then talking about your job, I mean, you've been there since 2013. What are some of the most satisfying parts of your day to day? I love my job. Uh, you know, having experienced scleroderma in my own family, I know that the diagnosis can be a bit overwhelming. It can make you feel a bit isolated because not everyone understands what you're going through. And so I just love that we're a resource for people to come and get information, feel empowered to get connected to the right doctors, to get connected to other patients, and really just start to realize that they're not alone, you know? Yes, I mean, that is, uh, and speaking of that, I, I think, you know, this, this dovetails perfectly into the next question about the support group. So. Uh, what are some activities, for someone who's never been to a support group, if our listeners haven't been to a support group, but they have scleroderma, what are some examples of stuff that goes on at the support group level? 
That's a great question. I know there's a lot of people that are hesitant, you know, to attend a support group, um, and I understand that. I think I think a support group is just a place to gather and talk to other people who really understand what you're going through. Even if your family is uh, very supportive, you know, they no one can quite understand it like someone else who's going through it. So it's really just a place, they're a resource for each other. And the things that go on at support groups, sometimes it's just, you know, two hours of conversation and you could probably sit and talk all day. Um, sometimes it's a little more structured, you know, they'll watch videos together and it's, it's sort of educational. Um, they'll try to educate each other. And sometimes they even just throw parties. I've had support groups that have Halloween parties and they dress up and they just do something fun. Right, and, and, and just talk a little bit about, and this is uh, throwing you a little bit for the curveball, just so you know, I gave Stephanie the questions in advance. This wasn't on it, but I think this is a pretty easy one. Talk about the uh, the Greater Chicago chapter. What geographic area do you guys cover? Well, we actually are uh, all the way from northern Illinois to southern Illinois and even into uh, northwest Indiana and parts of Wisconsin as well. So we have we have support groups as far north as Green Bay uh, and in Milwaukee and Madison and, and like I said over into northwest Wisconsin. Oh that's great and either just so our, yeah. our just so our listeners know uh, if you call our national office 800-722-4673 Seven two two hope, or you know we can uh, point you in the right direction of a sh- support group in your neck of the woods. You know there's over 160 support groups across the country. You know there's some in Stephanie's territory. There's some, you know, all over the country, even in places where there's no chapter. So certainly a great uh, resource to get out to. Uh, speaking of national, you know our national office. How does your chapter, Stephanie, and I know you're part of the Chapter Relations Committee, how does your chapter interact with the national office? Well, you know, as chapters, we're all trying to do great work and serve our local communities, right? But there's also an understanding at a national level that we're all in this together. And, you know, we want to know that if, if someone moves across the country, that, you know, we can easily tap them into that local chapter. And... So we just really work together, you know, to create sort of one national brand and, and help each other out and, um, and find ways that we can better serve patients. So we work very well with the national office and, um, uh, you know, they put on a great conference every year. I would highly recommend the national conference uh, to anyone that hasn't attended, um, you know. Yeah, and just... Uh... Just so everyone knows, our national conference will be held deep in the desert of Arizona. It'll be nice and toasty, <laughs> warm out there, July 21st through the 23rd. Kind of, what are some of the biggest challenges faced by a local chapter? Well, I would say as a nonprofit, um, you know, one of the biggest challenges is always just resources. So I would, um, you know, just encourage everyone to get involved in some way kind of like trying to build a huge sandcastle with a tiny little shovel. But if you had 25 other people that show up with their shovel, you can build it pretty quickly. So we are absolutely successful because of the collective effort of our volunteers and our starting a uh, team and you're, you're going to walk and or you're getting your friends and family together or you're starting a support group. It's all those little efforts combined that make us successful. So I just, I encourage everybody to get involved and know that, you know, um, whether you're fundraising or or volunteering or or however you're involved, that it definitely makes a big difference and it it matters to us, so. Well, Stephanie, I want to thank you for joining us. I think this was, you know, a great visit with you and uh, best of luck to you and the Chicago chapter. I'm sure we'll uh, be catching up with you soon. Sounds good. And that concludes our very first episode of the Scleroderma Foundation podcast. Thanks to our guests, Robert Riggs, Dr. Carol Fagali bostwick and Stephanie Summers-Gresh. As always, you can stay on top of all that's happening in our world by visiting scleroderma.org or by heading to any of our social media platforms. Until next time, this is Ross Blacker thanking you for listening and signing off. 
And that concludes this edition of the Scleroderma Foundation podcast. The podcast is a production of the Scleroderma Foundation and may not be reused or retransmitted without the express written consent of the foundation. As always, you can check out the latest happenings in our world by heading over to www.scleroderma.org or visiting our social media platforms. Thanks for listening. Good day.